Good to see everybody back here again. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Josh Levitan, one of Fausto's day trading instructors here with Cyber Trading University. Let me just get a quick sound check first so I know you guys can hear us loud and clear. All right, perfect. Good to see you guys back here again. Tom, Leda, Todd, Mike, everybody else coming on in. Perfect. Sounds good, Reynolds. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, like I said, welcome welcome back. Good to see you guys back here again. And we have a special guest for you guys here today. So joining us with us right now is Pat Barham from Trade the System. So to give a quick introduction um, about Pat, Pat has been a seasoned trader uh, for the last 24, 25 years, primarily in the futures and equities market, um, graduated the, graduated from the University of Memphis himself. So he kind of grew up in the agricultural industry. Um, you know, that would translate, obviously, towards trading those futures and equities down the line. So what Pat will be bringing forth with you guys today, what he'll be teaching you guys, is exactly that, the title of his topic, Holiday Trade. So... Obviously, as we know here in CTU and, and, of course, everyone else, the market volume is getting lower and lower and lower as the uh, as the summer drifts on. A lot of our big market makers are going away for the summer, so the market volume is lower. And obviously, going into the fall and winter, the market volume picks back up. So what Pat is here to teach you guys today is exactly how to trade each season according to the credit spread, according to the trend altogether, understanding different spread trades out there, when to hold, when to fold them, and essentially how to manage your winning trades. Now, Pat, are you there? Yeah, Josh, I'm here. Thank you. No problem at all, Pat. The floor is all yours. All righty. Let me get the uh, slides going here. Hope you guys had a great trading day. The right monitor going, hey, it worked this time. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, all right, Josh, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, what we're going to be doing today, guys, talking about the holiday trade. We're coming up, and I guess you all know that uh, very shortly we'll be having a three-day weekend coming up. And that's where I come in and take and taking a look at this I, I don't know what you call it. it it's uh, it just a repeating cycle that happens over and over again. And uh, a lot of people it, it may be unaware of it, but there's a reason for all of it. And that's why I wanted to, uh, to show you all this this afternoon. I think it's something that you'll be able to make some money off of in the next week or so. Uh, we are already off of the Memorial Day weekend. We've had a, a Pretty up on that holiday, we've already had a pretty good move. So let me get into the introduction on on all of this. And as you guys know, uh, futures trading, and we've got to to make sure that you know this is futures and options trading has large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. Uh, main thing that you have to know if you're going to trade futures that. Uh, Past performance doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. Uh, anything that happens that uh, we're we're saying in here, it, we aren't soliciting trades uh, by any means. And make sure number one that if you can't afford to lose it, don't trade it. So you know, just a a, a warning. It's kind of like uh, getting on a Southwest flight. Southwest Airlines flight. Sometimes, you know, some of you get on some of the flights and uh, they read everything that they, they're all the emergency procedures. And then the ones you remember are the ones where the, the, uh, the stewardess gets up and, and says, okay, everybody got their seatbelt fastened. If not, just prepare to uh, be tossed about the cabin and comes up with some type of speech. In this one, make sure that uh, if you, can't afford to lose it, don't trade. Now, I myself, uh, I'm with tradethesystem.com. I'm one of the co-founders there. Myself and Michael Sullivan have been moderating trading rooms for well over 10 years. I've been trading myself. Uh, you can see I've got a little bit of gray hair, which is almost all of it. 
at least all the hair is still there. And I've been trading in the commodities market for over 30 years. Actually, it's uh, 35 years. And I don't know any of you other guys out there been trading that long. And if you have, congratulations, because it means that you are probably doing something right if you've stuck around this long. Uh, with Trade the Systems, we I have an open room every day, and I'm trading futures every day. And uh, we're just sharing some of the things that I've learned over the over the 30 years of trading that I've been trading. And I think that's very important. And uh, one of the reasons it's important is is because you've got everybody in here who is trading had to start somewhere. And let me ask this question and see if I can get a little bit of feedback in there. Uh, how many of you guys are trading futures currently? Just put yes in there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Several of you guys. All right. Out of this, um, how many people in here have traded the agricultural futures? Corn, soybeans, wheat, soybean meal, soybean oil. Uh, Sammy, Marco, Scott, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. That'll give me a little bit of an idea of, of what you guys are doing. Now, also you guys uh, who've been trading and out of everybody in here, how, let me ask this question. Uh, how long have you been trading? It's okay if you're if you're brand new, if you are just uh, just getting started, if you are a seasoned trader. What I'm going to show you in here is something that I think every trader can can uh, enjoy along the way because it's something in here that I think could open up your eyes on and off for over 30 years. Wow. New traders, right. new years, okay. 15, options, 20 plus years, okay, all right. Now, this next slide I'm going to show you for you guys to get some idea of where we're coming from uh, is something that I've, I've picked up a long time ago, and, and I kept this for this reason. I'm a big believer in seasonal trades. And in seasonal trades, uh, this is something that, that was published back in, I think this was in the 19, somewhere around the 1920s, I believe it was. And this it, this is a legend that uh, has gone on. Well, this 36 year old legend, and this was this was back in the I think this was back in the 40s when this was published. So so that would give you some idea of how you know how valid it really is. I don't know, but no matter what the situation, this is a is deal of the legend of the voice of the tomb and the legend is this that uh, there was a millionaire trader on the Chicago Board of Trade and he had made as I said he made millions trading in the futures market and he had children his wife died and he had children and his children ended up being fairly lazy and thought that they were going to inherit all their father's money uh, and this guy, this trader, he felt like his children were being very wasteful and they weren't doing anything to show any type of desire to possibly follow in his footsteps. They just thought they were going to get the money and just live off of this money for the rest of their life. 
Well, when he died, all of his money went to charity. And supposedly, this is what he left them in his will. Uh, it was the dates that he would be buying and selling corn, soybeans, uh, wheat, corn and wheat. You don't see my slides. Okay. Guys, you other guys, I need some help here. You all see my slides okay? Yep, yep, yep. SD, the only thing I know to do is tell you is we, we do it all of them. Uh, jump in and you see voices. Yeah, that's what you need to be seeing. Yeah, you might need to log out and log back in. The type top right X button to refresh the page. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Click the top right X button to, re to refresh the page. Okay, and this is, this is what we've got, guys. Uh, off of this, there were some dates that he left behind and they were seasonal trades that uh, they were showing. Now, from the voice of the tomb, is it still a viable trade setup? Yes, it is. And what's changed over the years? What's driving force behind the dates on the voice of the tomb? Well, the voice of the tomb definitely was seasonal trades. And what has transpired over the years has been a lot of different things. Now, if some of you guys have been around for a while, you've probably seen a, a particular movie that's been very interesting to traders for a long time uh, because it's entertaining, trading places. Now, question is, what drove the greed in trading places? What did they think, uh, what was the two brothers, they thought they were going to corner a market and they thought they were going to corner. Anybody remember what market they were going to trade and why they were trading? Yeah, the OJ market, orange juice. And they, it's a, they were looking for a crop report to come out. Now, you think, well, what does that have to do with it? Yeah, it was an orange juice. Uh, what does that have to do with anything with the holiday trades? Well, there are reports released during the summer that you guys need to be aware of if you're going to trade in the grain markets. If you aren't trading in the grain markets, you're missing a fantastic opportunity. And let me see if I can make this work because my system upgraded to Windows 10. And this is what I want to show you. Hopefully... What's going on? Something happened. Oh, there it is. There we go. This is what I want you guys to see. see it, let me see if it, yeah, there we go. Now, I'm going to show you some daily charts in here right now, live trading. You know, it's boring enough to look at slides, but let's, and that's why I wanted to go in here and show you these things, guys. Let me erase this. Let me expand this. Now, I'm going to go back in and show you off of Memorial Day what we had happen. Let's see, Memorial Day weekend was right around here. We came back in, and now this is $4.10. After the holiday, the three-day weekend, what happens? We see a really nice move that's come up in here. And it, what's happening is we are transitioning in the grain markets between a planting season and a weather market. At the end of June... The end of May, first part of June, majority of the crop is planted. And once it's planted, we begin to see some fluctuations happen in the market that can drive the, the market very strong. 
And this is going to be, do we get a lot of rain through the Midwest? Are we getting a lot of heat through the Midwest? Is a crop going to be damaged? And once a month, around the 10th of the month, we will get a crop report, just like in trading places where they waited on orange juice crop report to see what was happening. What we do is we go in here to look to see what uh, the projections are off of the crop. Every Monday after the close, we get crop conditions, which is if the crop is good or bad. Now, I don't give a rip what any of these reports say. The key for you guys on all the reports, if you're a technical trader, is when the report comes out. I think it's really important for you guys to know. Don't get hung up on looking at any type of report, even FOMC. You tell me that uh, when when an announcement comes out for, for the change in uh, interest rates, that does it really matter really what they say, or is it that the report is out and then the technical trading kicks in. Algorithm trading, we're trading a lot against computers these days. The, the funds get in and manipulate markets and move it in times when it's so unexpected. Perfect example is this. During planting this year, which starts about mid-April, we saw the market make a really nice run. Up until that time, you can see that the, the markets were trading right around the 370 average. And then right in the midst of planning, we make a run in the market up to high 407. Now that was a gift. The guys who were planting a crop right then were not expecting this because we got a large supply of grains at this time, you also had South America that was, uh, the, the, their crops were harvested and done. And so we get a run up in the market. What really moved it? Well, the commodity funds got in and started dumping money into it and they ran it up. Well, how do we know? Open interest really exploded. And then we got a correction. Most people were thinking, okay, uh, first part of May, it's all over with. The funds got in and started buying again. And you can see they moved this market from 370 up to about 440. That's about a 70 cent move, a $3,500 move. Now, let me show you another one in here that would dwarf what corn did. And it's a soybean market. Now, these are live charts. Now, off of the soybean market, we made this move. First part of March, this low in here was 862. We made a move to 12 over $12. Off of this move, guys, this is a, over a $15,000 move in the soybeans. Now, look at this closely, and this is worth the price of admission if this is all I told you, and then we left and did nothing else. Soybeans, look at the pattern. I am a, I'm very much of a visual trader. I'm a, I look for patterns in the market. I have my entire career. I use Fibonacci retracements. Uh, I kind of cut my teeth doing Elliott Wave stuff. I, I don't spend a lot of time doing it, but I know the type moves and the patterns that they put in. Now, look at this strong pattern that we put in in the soybean market over $12. We right now are at 11, six, 11, what did we close today? Uh, the last was 11.26. Uh, give you some idea. I am, uh, and I guess it's okay to show this. I have short soybeans, or uh, short corn today, and this was the move off of the short corn. Uh, up in here. And that was my move today on the corn market. And also, I had uh, this week, I've had a pretty decent week in here since I've been short corn. And this is a position trade for me that I'm holding on to. So, uh, that's, that's where I am right there. 
this was this is not a simulated trade. This is live trading. So I'm not showing you my account numbers. And uh, just to give you some idea there. So now on the soybeans, this is what we've got going. And this is what I caught. And let me go back in the corn and show you here. This is what I caught in the corn. I, this is where I've been short in the corn market, and I've made a, a nice profit out of that. Uh, in that account, I showed you I, I trade off of that one. That's what when I do my live trading in the in the room, in our trading room, uh, I only do a max of four contracts in any of them. And the reason I don't want my my platform locked up if I'm going showing uh, three or four different systems and my big trading accounts, I, I run off of another machine. Now back to soybeans. Soybeans up in here at, at 11.26, this is what I want you to take a look at right here. It's something that I call the three sisters. And the three sisters will show different trading patterns throughout the day. This is something that you can pick up off of. You can see here the pattern in wheat, the pattern in soybeans looks very similar. Corn looks a little different here going into the close. That the, a lot of the markets, I use this same process. The ES, the YM, and the NASDAQ, they trade similar in price direction. I'm looking for an edge by trying to see which one picks up first and moves. Uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, very similar, especially corn and soybeans. Wheat's a different growing season, but a lot of times it moves together. Uh, the energy markets, you can trade crude, uh, oil, and gas. Uh, you can trade gold and silver. Uh, copper sometimes moves with it, but gold and silver are the two that, that I rely on quite a bit. In the uh, financials, you've got bonds, the notes, the five and ten year notes. You've got those things that you can take a look at. Yeah, this is uh, what I'm showing you right here. Uh, Dave said, what's that? The transact screen I was showing was the, the uh, short position that I've got on in corn. Now, this is what I want you to take a look at is this market moves. Um, expect something big to happen as we go into the 4th of July weekend. Like I said, this is, this is worth whatever you put on it right now. Um, there have been several big trades that I've made over the years uh, off of the holiday trade. Now, let me go back to, uh, to my PowerPoint and take a look at, uh, what was that? Okay, now first thing you need to know about reports, when are they released? Now, you can go to Econo Day and you will pick up all the financial reports off of that one. Uh, housing starts, jobless claims, stuff like that. You need to know that. Now, it shows you nothing at all about the grain markets. And I argue you that do you really need to know if FOMC, it, you need to know what they are doing. No, you need to know when it's going to take place. Um, that's the key to all, all of that. And let me get to this. All right, monthly crop reports. We will see the monthly crop reports uh, around two different periods of time. It's either going to be the end of the month or right around the beginning of the month, right around the 10th. Most of them are around the 10th that really move it. Now, these reports now, they used to come out at 7.30 in the morning. They now come out while the market is actively trading. So at 11 Central, 12 Eastern, you'll get these reports. And the market will just blow the doors off. Now, what happens when the reports come out? Look at this one. This was back in 2015, in August of 2015. Uh, I've already told you some of the ones, and I want you to take a look at, uh, let me see if I can draw on this chart too. Take a look at around these dates. 
Nope, it's not going to let me do it. I don't think. Hold on, let me see if I can get this to work. Without moving it. Look at this date. I told you July the 4th. Here's the 4th right here. On this date, it's a blank. This was with uh, trade, uh, trade Station. Here's a July 4th. We can look at the move. I think, well, that's not very much. Look, 1020 down to 960. And then we make a reversal. There's a, there's a, then you've got Labor Day that comes in here. That when it comes in, we see some moves there. Uh, in June, this was Memorial Day right here last year, and you can see the move this thing made going into the July 4th weekend. Is that similar to what we're seeing, what we saw this year? Very similar uh, in terms of the strength of the market. A lot of times as you come in, this is not a Connell day. I'll show you what it, I'll, I'll might have to go to it. Let me see if I can bring this up for you guys. Uh, And I'm, I may just totally screw everything up. And I'm sorry if I do. This is. No, it's, I can't do it. Uh, be, be patient, my friend. Let's see if I can get, oh, here we go. Here's some a couple of sites that you guys need to go to. If I can get it to show. CMEgroup.com, number one. Boy, it's responding quickly in here, isn't it? Let's try again. It may be with everything I'm doing. Let's see if this will come up. Here we go. Uh, this is USDA. Which one is this? Government reports. This isn't the one I want. Let me Bear with me, guys. That's not working. USDA crop reports. This is the one that you want. Let's see. Yep, this is it. Calendar view. Google in here, USDA crop reports, and this is what you get. We've got June, and this is what we've got coming up the end of June. We've got grain stocks, acreage report, how many acres actually been planted, and this will be uh, reported early in the morning. No, this is this is 12 o'clock. This is 12 o'clock, the grain stocks report. This is June. Now, July, we've got, so the 30th is we coming up in here. We're going to see some pretty big moves in here. In July, this is what you need to be aware of. Off of the July reports on the 12th, this is the big dog in the in the market on the this particular one. It's going to be a biggie. Uh, it's crop production, what we're expected to grow, uh, world supply demand, 
And because of this, there is a lot of price movement. Now, in the market, you will also see, and let's go back to June, and during the growing season, this is what we get off of, off of these reports. Now, I can tell you that this is, you know, is this a uh, webinar on reports? Absolutely not. This is a report on what you need to know and then things come out. Now, here's a condition on corn, and this is what we're looking at right here in the corn markets on how much is good to excellent. 75% uh, is good to excellent. If you take fair to excellent or, or either just take very poor and poor, what we're looking for are very low numbers if you're, that's what growers want to know. But for us, what we're looking at in these situations is how good the crop is. So when you've got very poor and poor, only 5% of the market uh, of the growing that we've got, we know that we've got a very good crop that's in great condition. Uh, same thing with cotton. It comes out every week and you'll get this, uh, a lot of junk that you don't want, but this comes out. And now here's what we're looking at here. Winter wheat harvested. Uh, we know that wheat is getting ready in a lot of areas that it's being harvested. 81% of it's already harvested in Arkansas and 75% uh, in California. Washington is a big state uh, that's mostly spring wheat. Uh, Texas has most of theirs. It, and these are things that we take a look at. And the condition of these, the condition is, is fairly good for the winter wheat. Uh, it's not optimal, but you know, it's not enough to sink the market. Now, as we get back to this, what are we looking at? We're looking at these things. Uh, we're looking on these dates for price movement. And what do we get? You've got to know when these reports are, are being released, there's also a commitment of traders report. And off of this report, what you want to know is what the managed money is doing. And I'll show you one of those reports pretty quick and because I know I'm gonna run out of time. And let me get back to... Okay, and this is the effects that a report can have. Uh, you can see, and this is going back, which one is this? This was uh, September, uh, September 7th of 2015. And take a look at the moves uh, off of these reports that the type price movement that we get in here off of these reports. You get back in here off of uh, um, Labor Day, and we see some really big moves in here. You go back in and take a look at these over the years, and, and you'll see some things that um, just are really you've taken moves that it just sometimes will blow your mind is how how hard we work on the upside and then we see a turnaround to the downside now this was back in september 2015 and beginning on uh as you see here on july the 14th and i'll close this trade out in september uh no, this was september corn this coin, yeah, September corn closed it out August the 7th. And off of this move, uh, this was the actual my profit off of it uh, was a $5,000 move on two contracts, $5,300. Uh, this was a change. I, I topped it out at uh, $6,325 the day before. And then on the day that I got stopped out, I let it run a little bit and it stopped me out. It had a $975 it went against me. The ultimate profit off of it was $5,300. And that's the type um, moves that we get around these holidays that you get off of this. And this is the actual report off of it that you can see where on July the 14th, in August the 7th, 
where I was in there, I was filled at 436, and I got out on the short at 372. Not a huge move, but this was my profit off of it. Right here, gross profit, 53.50. Now, that's that's the report from Transact that uh, came in. Now, how have times changed? What's going on? Uh, what happens in the market? You can see that that's the way agricultural used to be. This is the way agricultural is now. Agriculture is now. Uh, what's changed in the pits? Uh, this was the pits. This was after 2008 when we got to electronic trading. And all of this is just to cover a couple of different things. There are two sides of trading. You have hedging, which that drives the market because people need to hedge to protect themselves in the market. Uh, and then there are speculators. Speculators provide a lot of liquidity, especially now. Now, off of this, how do you find out about it? I mentioned the Commitment of Traders report. Commitment of Traders report from Chicago, out of Chicago, what we've got in here, uh, off of this that you need to be aware of, Make sure that you know that you're looking at managed money. You need to know what, what they're doing. They will drive the market an awful lot. Um, let's see, I saw I had a question out of here. All right, we're good. You need to look at these numbers. And off of these numbers, that's where you find out what managed money is doing. And what's happened? Seasonalities, a lot of the seasonalities now I gear them around holidays in here. I've got, like I said, planting. Uh, then we get into uh, Memorial Day. We get into 4th of July. And it's not only the grain markets. It's all of the markets involved, guys. Uh, seasonalities are based on historical trends. Uh, some of them are some fantastic uh, trends that we've got in here. Uh, one particular thing. Uh, Soybeans, shorting soybeans for the summer. If you go back in, uh, and let me see, if you hold short soybeans uh, in June and you hold those through the end of July, uh, what's the percentage of this that I've got in here? The it had about a 65% accuracy off of it in shorting the soybeans in June going to July. That's a pretty high accuracy rate. Now, there's a, another program, guys, that I would be happy to, to share with you. And I'll mention, you know, at the end of this, I'll show you what we're doing also is uh, I've got an on-demand session that you guys can get but talk about seasons I can set up something for you to take a look at some great uh, uh, software that will work for you to use seasonal trades. How things changed. Uh, it's changed because simply international trading. It used to be people thought that the grain markets were just a kind of a sleepy summer market, something to trade. While usually in the equities, y'all heard more than likely heard the saying of, uh, sell in May and go away. Well, that's not so true anymore. Uh, you've got the grain markets and they are popping. If you take a look at some of the moves that we've seen in the last two or three days, they are fantastic moves in the market that uh, if you're if you aren't getting in on those, you know you're missing an opportunity that uh, I think you you missed a bunch of the corn already this is a nice move in anybody's book in anything that you're trading if you could take a portion of this it's over a 50 cent move in the market right here a $2,500 move and today's Thursday if you go back into last week you can see how quick it moved to the downside and this is a really nice trend going to the upside uh, if you take a look at the soybeans this is what's ahead Potential in here, I think, of us testing the 100 period EMA. That's around $10. This is a potential $5,000 move if we just go down and test the 100 period EMA. Uh, I don't know if I've got the cattle on here. Cattle's another one. And, and 
a lot of you guys uh, may not have traded the cattle market any, but let's see if I can get it. There's a cattle market right here. This can this doesn't look big, but that's a, a, a very large price move right here in terms of dollars per single contract. Uh, this is big. And what we can see happen right now going in, it's coming back up and testing this 100 period EMA. Uh, I'm very, like I said, very visually oriented. These are the indicators in here, I think, are some of the best indicators to keep me in line with what I'm doing or moving averages. And I'll share with you uh, what we've got, plus also uh, what I call the power band here that I've got, uh, this red dot. It helps me enter the market in and get an edge in the market and also stay out of trouble. Case in point, when it's down here on the bottom side of the power band, I don't want to be selling. Uh, I want to be looking for potential long plays in the market. As you can see here, when the setup's right, then you can get some pretty nice moves to the upside. Uh, same thing if you were looking at November soybeans. Uh, right now, I'm right in the middle of these moves, and so what I'm looking for right now are some Fibonacci price retracement levels in here that might, once they're broken, that we might see some moves. Good example would be from right here from this low up to this high. I look for a 62% retracement, and that does not come in right now until we get down to 1083. And that's still a pretty decent drop. And if we take that out, then I think we're, our next target is going to be the 1020 level. So give you some idea of what we're looking at. Now, off of these seasonal trades that we've got, what's driving it off? You've got China. You've got uh, the foreign markets that uh, China has come into. And what they're doing now is the amount of grain that they're exporting in the market. Now, China has been kind of weak on what they've been doing, and they're getting kind of political in here also of canceling some of the U.S. grain and buying it from uh from Brazil and places like that, Argentina. We've got to make sure that we do this. When you start taking a look at global projections going out, you can also see that the, the agricultural market is a market that if you learn now, it's going to be there. You know, It's not going away. So what are we looking at? There's a voice of the tomb. It's still there. But the voice that you're hearing now has to be traded a little bit different. And that, that voice has to be traded with a, a system that you're looking at and something that uh, you can attach to it that will enable you to profit from these levels. And this is what we're doing. And let me see if I can get this working. Let me end this one and show you. Hopefully, I can show you what I'm looking at. And There we go. This is what I wanted to show you. I mentioned it already, the three sisters. You've got agricultural markets, you've got the equity markets, the financials, and the, and the energy markets. A lot of what drives this through this, you've got to be, and this is pretty much what I just wanted to show you. Uh, let me go back one here. You need to be a student. This thing back. You need to be a student of volume. You should have volume on all the charts that you're doing. Are you short soybeans now? No, I'm looking for a rally, and I don't mind sharing. I share it with everybody in our live track room. What I'm looking for right now is a little bit of a rally. Uh, Tomorrow is going to be a big day for this reason. We're going into Friday. Friday is a big day in the grain markets for this reason. 
hedgers like to get hedged and get rid of risk over the weekend. Why? If I'm an elevator and I'm taking in soybeans and I don't have them hedged, I've got the risk of what I'm paying over the weekend and then coming in Monday and maybe soybeans are 20 cents lower, or corn's 20 cents lower, or wheat's 20 cents lower, something of that nature. I deal a lot in spreads also. Uh, you know, there's a great spread that I've played for a long time, and the spread is uh, uh, long wheat and short corn. There's a soybean spread that I'm going to be looking at going in, uh, even coming into this, this first part of next week. I'm going to short the Julys and look to be long Novembers. Is it going to set up? I hope hope it does. Uh, there's it's all types of spreads that I want to show y'all off of a, uh, another webinar that I will be working on a little bit later. Um, now, the importance that you need to know, I read the volume on the close. I love trading the close and the open. I like trading when there's trading activity in the market. Uh, and around that, it's the volume. There's a lot of different ways that you can you can read volume uh, with everything there. That's where we have an advantage that we did not have back 10, uh, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Once we started electronic trading, we got this information, which is volume right here. Before, you were relying on what went on in the pit and somebody relaying that information that those people aren't there anymore. So where's the pit? This is the pit right here. There's still an active pit. It's just more, uh, it's not the guys jumping up and down and yelling that you can look at. But you once you learn to read the volume bars, when you learn to read what the market is doing and how it's reacting around the volume areas, that makes a big difference. Uh, all of that, you, you know, I do a, spend a lot of time reading tape, uh, watching to see what's going on, how many contracts are rolling through things. And I, the, my, tr my three sisters, uh, and there's a story about that, that that I won't share now because I'm running short of time. But the three sisters, it's real important for you guys to, to make sure that you know what we're looking at when you go into some of these markets. Why? Because there's a certain correlation between markets. Uh, if you trade bonds, you know that there is a, a opposite type move most of the times. If the bonds are going up, if we're seeing a good good trend to the upside in the bonds, usually the ES and the YM is going down, and then vice versa. Uh, and if they are all working together, you know, one of my rules is I don't trade. That happens. Uh, the Nasdaq, for instance. You know, you see the similar moves in the market. Now, this was off of the holiday trade that I put on here. Uh, I had a really nice trade off of this one. Now, off of this, how much of this did I, I picked up quite a bit of this move. But this was a $4,000, a $14,000 move in soybeans when you take a look at this. When you take a look at the moves from the highs to the low on a $3,300 margin requirement, if you carried it overnight, that's a 439% move. Off of this high at 1326 down to to, uh, to 1038 and three quarters, that's a pretty stinking big move. And if you haven't taken advantage of some of these, that's what we're doing. Now, this is what I, and I'll close it out with this. Uh, if you guys go to tradethesystem.com forward slash power, uh, I've got an on-demand recording in there for five ways for the gains and the grains, so the holiday trades to go in more in depth on it. It's $97. Uh, I'd love to have you guys do it. When you go in there, also, if you will email me, pat at tradethesystem.com, I'll set you up for our 30, day, uh, 30 days in our live trading room. And over the next 30 days, you guys would be able to come in there and visit with us off of this on the $97. Uh, and I would I would love to have you. Now, let me go back in here to live charts just for a second. And 
I can get this to work. Okay. Some of these moves that we've got This is what I wanted to show you. Look at the move. You think, well, maybe soybeans have already hit. Guys, look at the move where we came from, from $8.80 up to $12. There's still a lot of potential in here. Now, let's take a look at corn in the December contract. This is this week. This is a precursor, I believe, to what may happen in soybeans. In the wheat market, take a look at the wheat market, and you can see, wow, what's the difference? This is in harvest right now, but still, this is 520, and we're down at uh, 454 right now. Uh, also, gold, what's going to happen in the gold? Uh, I've got my ideas, but I'll share some of that with you. I, I trade the crude quite a bit, and... Also, traded the bonds. I nailed the bonds in here uh, today. Uh, some pretty nice moves off of the bonds. Then calling out those trades in there. And uh, we do all of that in our live trading room. So, guys, uh, don't miss this one. And let's see if we can go back in. Two. This is a week leading up to July the 4th. Look what happened last year. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. You get into the September. We saw some nice moves in September. And then reversals. I could go back through and show you. And I share, that's what I do. I share a lot of the uh, uh, seasonal trades in here. And I would be more than happy to uh, sit down with you guys and our trading room and share with you. And this is what I want you to do. Go again back to uh, that on demand uh, for $97. Trade the system.com forward slash power. Josh, I'm out of town. So See, I can get them back. Guys, questions. If you have questions, I'll be more than happy to share them with you. I'll try to answer them. I can want to share a question with you. I would be more than happy to answer it. Yeah, soybeans, I'm, I'm looking at uh, in all of these markets over the next, we've got uh, op, the uh, July contracts expiring. I'm looking this week to, uh, in the first part of next week, to have some really nice things. Silver. Let me see if I don't have it on here. Let me pull it up. Now, look at the correlations. You have gold, silver. Uh, there's our silver. Gold, very similar type patterns. 
this is a pattern right here that happens all the time, guys. And I'll share this. And, and this is, you know, I see different things. I can't draw off of that. Is there a drawing pen right here? No. No. All right. This move right here from these lows, and this is a weekly. Yeah, this is a weekly chart off of this weekly move. From this low up to the high right here. We see this 38% retracement. It goes down to 50 off of this. I don't, the uh, Fibonacci retracements to 50%. The only thing I use a 50% retracement on are the, is the bond market, right? That right there can save you guys a lot of money. It's a 50% retracement. And I will tell you why if you had questions about trading the bonds. This pattern right here. Rally, sell off, rally. I'm looking to see if it violates the top here, but I'm also looking, I will be looking at this MACD and I'll be looking at volume. If the volume begins to dry up, then I'm looking for a move back down silver that would take us to this level, which would be 1541. Same thing on the gold. You see this pattern here? A rally, sell off. So what's our retracement off of this one? And this is off of a weekly. And the way I operate here, there is a setup in here that works very, very well of and give you some parameters to work off of. But I can't give away the boat. If it does take out this 38% right here, then I would look for the move down to... 1,149. Okay, even in the... Yeah. I can give me a good chart off of this one. Even looking at this, this movement that we've got right here on the daily chart in the, uh, in the E-mini Dow, in the pattern that we're putting in here, it looks like potential in here of uh, just kind of a this is a summer type happen type trade we're getting in this channel. So guys, uh, Here's a bond trade this morning, and I looked at this early, and I told them that we, you know there was potential going down to 165.15. We came close. We went to 27, and I made that comment back when we were at 160. When we were when we were doing this right here at the top. I made the comment that we potentially could be 165, I think it's 165.15, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see what it did. Big sell off in here. Guys, that's it for me. Josh, are you here? If not, I guess I'll just sign out, cut the mic off, and leave up... Uh, our action steps that you guys need to love to see you uh, come in here again, send me an email, pat at trade the system.com. I'll be more than happy to set you up for a trial. If you go in off the holiday trade, Eric. Okay. You're here. Guys, that's it for me. See you in the next one.